Scrapwood challenge, scrapwood challenge. It's crack, it's crack, it's firewood, but some of the wood is good. I've prepared all the wood first for all the tools, so now it's time to get on with the first one. I've tried to make the tools as simple as possible to make, and this square's about as easy as it gets. It's just four pieces of stock, all the same thickness, that's about six millimetres. And first of all, I'll glue the handle together or the stock with these three pieces. That leaves an open mortise and when that's dried, we'll glue the blade in then. We could have started off with a piece of stock this wide and just cut the mortise out, but I think this way is nice and simple and you get a good accurate mortise. To keep them lined up, I'm using a couple of pieces of scraps with packing tape and then clamped to the sides. Now we need to make sure that both edges of the stock and the blade are flat and parallel to each other. You could do that with a hand plane, but this particular wood that I've picked out would chip very easy, so I've glued a piece of sandpaper to a flat piece of stone. While the glue's still wet, we'll test whether it's square. So I'm gonna put it against my bench here, make a line down this one side, and then flip it over. And if that lines up, then we're all square, and that does. And if it wasn't, then we can undo the clamp and move it slightly to where we need it, clamp it back up and test again. And you do need to test the inside of the blade as well. But if it's parallel, that should all be good too, which it is. Although it's not necessary, I'm going to put a couple of dowels through the joint. I think the glue on its own would be perfectly fine as it is, but the dowels will look quite nice. I've got a couple of scraps of silky oak and I've just made my own dowels with that. Because the tri-square was so easy to make and I had spare stock, I decided to make a 45 degree one as well. And it was exactly the same. I just had to cut the ends of the stock at 45 degrees. To check the accuracy of the 45 degree square, I'm going to use the corner of my workbench. I'm using this corner because I know it's square. Uh, not all the corners of my workbench are square, but I know this one is. So if I make a line across like that and then check it against the opposite edge, and as you can see, that's pretty accurate. Every now and then, just test that it's still square. It probably will be, but it's easy enough just to draw that line, flip it over and check it. And if you need to make any adjustments to the blade, then just use sandpaper or a plane to take off what you need to get it back square. It's that easy. The bevel gauge is very simple to make too. I've got two pieces here, they're almost 10 millimeters thick and they make either side of the handle. Then I've got a small piece here, the same thickness of the blade and that's about six mil thick. So we'll glue these together first and that will make up the handle and then the uh, blade will be able to slide in that slot there.
While the glue's drying on the handle, I'll start working on the blade. This could be cut out with a jigsaw, a scroll saw, or even on the right table. I have all those things, but I decided to do it with the coping saw. To hold the blade in, I'm going to use an M10 bolt. So the one side I've drilled 11 millimeters so the bolt passes through, and then the other side I've drilled the eight and a half millimeters so I can tap that to 10 millimeter. Before I move on to the next tool, I'd just like to thank today's sponsor, which is Audible. I've been using their service for years, and if you ever see me in the workshop with my headphones on, I'm listening to an audio book from Audible. My personal recommendation is The Man Who Made Things Out of Trees. It has similarities to the Scrapwood Challenge, where the author makes as many things as he can, not out of scrap pole, but out of one single ash tree. It's a great read and I definitely recommend it. Audible has the largest selection of audiobooks on the planet and now Audible members get more than ever before. Each month Audible members get three titles of the choice, an audiobook, two Audible originals, exclusive sales and 30% off all regular priced audiobooks. There's never been a better time to experience Audible. Try it free for 30 days by visiting audible.com forward slash paskmakes or by texting PASCMAKES to 500500. And thanks again to Audible for supporting my channel. I made this marking gauge a while back. I'm going to make another. It's going to be more simple. I like the ruler on this one, so I'm going to do the same thing. And instead of making a cutter, I'm going to use nails instead. And the reason I have two nails is it's going to be a mortise gauge for setting out mortises. But if you prefer to just to make a marking gauge with one pin, then that's easy enough to do too. The head could be made out of one piece, but I reckon this way is a little bit easier.
The two holes are for the pins and I needed them as close to the edge as possible. If I'd have tried to drill that that close to the edge it would have just broken out so I drilled it further back and then sanded up to it. So now I'm going to glue this little block on the end here. I'm using acetone to clean the ruler and the beam first before I stick them together with epoxy. I've just filed a notch in the end of the ruler that allows me to line up the end of the ruler with the hole for the pin and it still gives enough room for the pin to go in the hole. The holes for the pins are drilled for a tight fit and to prevent the ruler from getting scratched or damaged I'm putting a small piece of dowel into the threaded hole before I put in the homemade thumb screw. The center finder could be made to any size. I'm going to make it quite small as I'll be using it just for tool handles or stool legs and things like that. The next three tools are all very simple but make sure you stick around to the end because I've saved the best one for last. Next we'll glue on the center piece but before we do that we just need to make sure it's 100% square and if it isn't make any adjustments. I cut this strip at half the width of this top piece so if I line it up along this outside piece here then it should be in the center. And I'll just check for the 45 and it needs twisting around a touch. I kept it small so it fits in the hand nicely. It's a very simple tool, it's very useful and I can't believe I've never made one before.
The ruler should go in the same way so the magnets rub on the back of the ruler and they don't mark the front. Even though it's easy enough to move the stop, it stays in position well enough when you need it to. There's not much to the centerline finder, all you need is a scrap. Drill three holes all in line and evenly apart. The middle one is 7mm for a pencil and the outside ones to match the dowels. In my case that's 8mm. I probably should have made the dowels just a touch longer, but it still works. I've kept my favourite one to last, it's a combination square and I'll start with the blade. The body's made up of three pieces, they'll get laminated together. The middle piece is slightly thicker than the blade, and then the last piece will get glued on like so, and that will hold the blade in place. And then what I'll do is shape the body to resemble a combination square like this, or something like it. It'll have a screw the same, that will screw down onto the ruler, but we don't want the screw to hit the ruler, so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to cut a small section out, from around about there and then we'll put a piece of loose floating uh, hardwood in there and the screw can push that against the ruler When I drilled the hole for the thumb screw, I realised that the drill bit wandered off, but I didn't realise that it went in on quite an angle. I don't know if you can see that. I'm going to try and fix it. The reason it's done that is because that middle layer, I've alternated the grain the opposite way, and I was drilling into the end grain, and the drill bits wandered off to find an easier path. So I'm going to chop that out, glue a block in, and then tomorrow I'll have another go at it. Thank <laughs> you. 
This time I did it on the drill press and I used the brad point bit. I should have done that in the first place. The wooden threads will be absolutely fine and won't wear out anytime soon. The thumb screws are only hand tightened and being an M10 bolt helps too. I never expected that to be square and it isn't, that's quite a long way out. I just have to sand a little bit off this edge here. It took quite a few goes to get it just right but now the square and the 45 are both perfect. Some of those tools I didn't think warranted their own video, that's why I made this one. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.